thought I'd just play quickly some of the things I wanted to play yesterday from the phonology section. Really just, I just think all I will play is two things I, I didn't play yesterday. Just examples of the speech of the Christians of Ormi and the Jews of Ormi. Anyway, remember yesterday I was saying how there was a different... The, the Jews and the Christians speak different dialects there's this so called communal dialect split mm-hmm. and uh, just to give you an example here is a speaker a woman, a Christian woman from Urmi uh, speaking and uh, just, just to hear, let you hear this Okay, that, that, as you can probably hear, she's starting to tell the story of Achikar, which is a very an ancient story. It's story in the, in the Middle East. Now here's uh, an example of the Jewish dialect. It was let for Hashuntana. Yashuntana at Fale Khadan Kabarata. Al Barate Raba Gibala. Raba Raba Gibala. Well that again it's only it's only the beginning of a story. But essentially, um, as I said to you before, <coughs> these two, two are very different dialects. Now I'm going to now move on to m- m- the other uh, presentation which is this, is, this is today's presentation, I need to just go to the, uh, <coughs> on morphology, that was the plan, um, so I, le- I need to let, yeah, um, what does that mean, do I press yet, press it, or, oh, you can't see that, yeah, I don't it's, it's, um, and it's you, what does this mean here? Ah, oh, it's okay. How do I get that on today? Good. All right. So, I'm going to talk to you, tell you something about morphology uh, <coughs> today. Um, and I'm going to just concentrate on a, on a, a few selected features to show you how the morphology of the, of, uh, of the Nina dialects um, um, have, has, un- has undergone all kinds of changes. Uh, I'm looking in particular at historical development and how languages in contact can have an effect on, on the spoken Aramaic dialects. And we're first of all going to start looking at the what I call nominal morphology and start with the pronouns. Um, now, um, all right. So, <laughs> sorry for that technical problem. Um, okay. Well, first of all, I want to look at the um, some of the developments of the uh, the demonstrative pronouns, because um, demonstrative pronouns are very closely related to so-called third-person pronouns, and in fact. A third person pronoun really is a kind of demonstrative or it is a development of a demonstrative pronoun. Um, now, Nina Daleks can have either a set of two demonstrative pronouns or a set of three demonstrative pronouns. Um, the uh, several dialects, like this Barwa dialect here in the middle, have uh, three sets of, of pronouns and one set is used to refer to what's called near the ixis when it means you're referring to something near the speaker so basically in English we say this yeah. that's awa in the masculine singular then they have a father ixis form awaha when it refers to something in which is far from the speaker and the hearer so I'll use awa in a when in a speech situation when I'm talking to people I would I would use awa to point this is the term beixis it means I'm pointing at something in the speech situation and awaha I'm pointing to something far from the from, from you as hearers and me as speaker 
say the other side of the room that would be far deities but Balawad also has a third group of, anaf- uh, of demonstratives which I call anaphoric and anaphoric means that it is a pronoun that is referring to, to something some referent which I has been mentioned previously but is not in the speech environment so I can't point to it but if I've just been talking about um, some fr- a friend of mine for example which who is not here but I've just been talking about him I would use this term ow he is absent from the speech situation but I'm referring back to him in the discourse that's called anaphoric so you have those three types of pronoun in many Nina dialects um, the, this anaphoric ow is quite interesting and because it can also be used in a speech situation um, if, if for example I, I gave Sergei a book and I said give me that book which is near you I would yeah. use ow because if you're particular, near the address, yeah. because if you're holding it in your hand in particular I'll, I know that you can identify it without me having to point to it uh-huh. so if, like you're, if, if you're holding a book in your hand I'd say give me Hali Al Thawa so, so that you can use it you can use the anaphoric in some spe- in the speech situation as well now the the point is that um, there are some Nina dialects which have only two sets of demonstratives. For example, in Karakosh, you have the Neodex is Ava <coughs> in the masculine singular, Awa in the Fadex is, uh, but, but, but you have an anaphoric, sorry, a, 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 Ahu, you have, you have three sets in Karakosh. But in uh, Jewish Arab Bell, for instance, this, this only has. It has the near the X is e, 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 ya, and then the hard X is O and the anaphoric O. So there are some Nina dialects which have a, uh, they use the same pronoun for the hard X is and the anaphoric. Uh, but a lot of the Nina dialects, particularly Christian dialects, have uh, three sets of pronouns. Um, the, uh, um, I think uh, rather than, I mean th- there are many many different sorts of pronoun uh, dif- different forms of demonstratives across the Nina dialects but what I want to just concentrate on uh, some of them just to give you a taste of some of them um, here the, the, those were the dialects some dialects in Iraq but here are some dialects in Turkey and western Iran we have uh, for example, in Herkabin you have the near the is Oha, far the is Awa, and anaphoric Ahu. Uh, but uh, in uh, Urmi Aha, this is Christian Urmi, Ova is far the is, and Ov is anaphoric. But the Jews of Urmi have only two sets: they have Ya, this, or far the is, and O anaphoric. Um, so let's just look how historically some of these have developed but before we do that <coughs> ok let, let me <coughs> there's something, something else that's quite interesting in, in many Nini dialects that, that they can uh, have variant forms of the father X's pronoun to express intensity so you can Barwa for example will say Awaha for that that over there, which is so far from the speaker, far from me and from you. But if I was to point to something a long way away, say the other side of the field, there was an intense form awaha, which is caused by a fortition of the vowel in, into this glottal stop awaha. And in some dialects, you have even you have a whole series of, of intensive forms you can actually create uh, um, you have a, in Peshhabo for example Awaha is, a, is the normal Fadex's form 
uh, which itself is a kind of intensive because you've got the H there turning to a pharyngeal which is a sort of intensification of full tissue but you'd say a waha with the lengthening of the vowel for, for very far and if you want to say extremely far away you would say a waha um, and uh, and then so that's just, a, a, just an example of how some of the, these dialects have, have developed but um, historically uh, I mean as you've seen there's a lot of diversity in the form of, of the demonstrative pronouns but um, I want to show you how I think languages and contact have had an influence of the form of these, of these pronouns um, now first of all let's take Karakosh Karakosh is on the Mosul plain and the, the near the Ix's pronoun third person is Ada which ca can be traced back quite, quite uh, legitimately to a, a, what I call a proto nina form that it is a proto-Aramaic form Hada with two, um, two de which, is, which can be reconstructed as a genuine Aramaic form mm -hmm. however it, it, it so happens in Arabic dialects and in the Arabic dialect of Mosul in particular which is probably one of the most clo the closest dialects the Arabic word for this on the f in, the, in the third masculine singular is identical Hada now that doesn't mean to say that Karakosh has taken this pronoun from Arabic uh, what has happened is, and this often happens in language contact situations is that a, la a language in contact can help preserve an original form um, and this seems to be what's happened with, uh, with, with Karakosh uh, and whereas in Barwa we have an innovation in that the third in the, the Nirdex is from Awa does seem to be innovation because if, if we're saying that the original form in Nina dialects is Hada uh, how do we get Awa? Well Awa seems to have been formed by analogy with um, with, with perhaps the anaphoric pronoun Aw uh, which um, it's uh, certainly an innovation but the point is that this innovation is not completely spontaneous but it is uh, it is a result of contact with with, with Kurmanji Kurdish where many Kurmanji Kurdish dialects in northern Iraq have a very very similar looking system of demonstratives so you have for example Barwa this is Awa and in the Kurdish of the area of Ahmadiyya which is the same area basically they would say Awa for this Awaha would be that far away in Barwa but Awehe or Awehe they would say in Kurmanji and Aw anaphoric Aw anaphoric in Kurmanji Kurdish now that doesn't mean to say that these forms are Kurdish in Aramaic it's, it's a situation where the Aramaic has somehow changed shape uh, by a um, by adapting itself to the shape of, of Kurdish and it, this often happens in, in language contact is that you have a language changing shape using its internal resources and becoming like the language in contact um, I think um, that's probably all I need to say I think uh, there's a, said a lot of other things that I could say but um, let's look at some of the other pronouns now um, we've got um, uh, so by the way so when we talk about the third person pronoun like he what we're really talking about is an anaphoric pronoun that's the point uh, so therefore when, you, when, we're dealing, when you're dealing with third person pronouns you have to take into account the whole demonstrative system um, and, but now if you move on to the other persons uh, essentially the, the first person <coughs> singular in, 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 in virtually all of the Nina dialects is Ana it's quite doesn't really change its form but the other persons are, do change their form the, the, the dialects exhibit a, 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 a large 
diversity. Um, now, many dialects have the form art or or arti for the second person singular without any distinction in gender. Arti looks a bit like a feminine gender if you know other 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 forms of earlier forms of Aramaic, but in fact they're Many dialects use at for masculine and feminine, or they, other dialects say arti for masculine and feminine. In fact, at is probably the most common in the Nina dialects uh, pronoun for simply first, second person singular, you, masculine or feminine. However, there, there are some dialects which have, uh, they, they have, a, a te- they have undertaken a, a change or change the form of this, this second person pronouns in order to express gender distinctions and particularly on the area of the Mosul plain like Harakosh for example uh, they uh, uh, in Harakosh you would say Ahit for you singular masculine but Ahat for you singular feminine and what's happened, this is, this is an innovation, ultimately they, it seems they have taken the pronoun at and they've split it syllabically into ahit and ahat and the, the it and at are, have been taken from the verbal inflection mm-hmm. where it, in, the, in the inflection of the verb which we'll look at soon, you know, a little bit later on th- this evening you have in, you have gender distinctions for the mas- for the masculine and feminine second person you and that's and this <coughs> often happens in in the formation of independent pronouns in that they change their shape by analogy with verbal inflection or inflection sometimes of phenomenal suffixes but this is certainly what's happened with Harakosh and this has happened in a number of other Nina dialects you have ayat, ayit and ayat in, in uh, many da- other dialects, the Mosul plain, for example, for masculine and feminine. Um, now, uh, we have the most widespread uses of the first person plural, that is we, is achni or achnan, which sound, will sound familiar to you from earlier Aramaic. Um, but, uh, um, there are some dialects which have the form at han, <coughs> which it seems to be a form based on analogy of the second person plural at khun, you plural. Because so some dialects you, it express the, the or, or many dialects express the the, 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 the the second person plural that is you plural at khun, um, and that itself, by the way, is is uh, is a, is a uh, a bit of a, a, a historical change um, but there are some dialects which change the shape of the first first person independent pronoun we uh, by analogy with atchun they say atchan instead of saying achni they say atchan by analogy with the second person plural now again there's a lot of a lots of different diversity and I, I don't I, I don't want to sort of confuse you by throwing too much data at you but I just want to show you the basic principles of how independent pronouns can change their shape and uh, pronouns in particular are very are, are very liable to change and the, the two the kind of factors which cause change are, are analogy within the paradigm of pronouns so like at at han being based on at hun, or by analogy with verbal inflection, uh, uh, or analogy with um, the <coughs> pronominal suffixes, because in fact hun there looks very much like the, the pronominal suffix hun your. We say things like uh, you add the hun to a noun, meaning your house, for example. Hun would mean would be the genitive suffix. So. Um, so I think the main point is you get a lot of diversity. Um, um, uh, right, and here are just some examples of the uh, second person plural suffix. Uh, I think um, 
I uh, I won't go into a lot of detail here because the, I mean, it really uh, this is really just to give you an example of the diversity of, of the dialects. I mean this really we've only got, we've just a few examples we can see the, these are all different forms of the second person plural you plural for achnutun achtum achtachum achtochum achun achnachun achatochun and you have uh, so many different sorts of um, I mean just imagine 150 dialects and virtually everyone has a slightly different form of the or of the pronoun. Um, uh, okay, now let's now look at pronominal suffixes, that is to say suffixes added to nouns to express a genitive relationship like my house, your house, his house. Um, now in earlier Aramaic and in, in other in, typical, in classical Semitic languages like Hebrew or Arabic um, um, the, um, if you add a suffix to a singular noun or a suffix to a, a plural noun you, you typically have a, a different form um, mm -hmm. or, or, or you write like in Hebrew you say beti but um, if you want to say my houses, you say Bartai, I, or, or you say Susi, my horse, Susai, my horses, right? Susacha, your horse, Susecha, your horses. Now, the same was the case originally in, in early Aramaic, um, but in most Nina dialects that distinction has disappeared and you get one suffix for both singular nouns and plural nouns. However, in Harakosh and in Barutle in, in, on the Mosul plain you get, you get some remains of this earlier system in the plural suffixes. So, you, so when you're saying uh, the um, in the third person plural, for example, uh, suffix hen, if you want to add that uh, to a, a singular noun, you just say hen, but if you want to add it to a plural noun, you <coughs> say ehen. Now, and suddenly, second plural, hun, added to a singular noun, but ehun, added to a plural noun, an, added to a singular noun, enan, added to a plural noun. But if you add a now, any uh, any of the, the the singular suffixes to to, to nouns, they, they remain the same on singular and plural. So you say ich is his added to a singular noun. Um, so you would say um, torich would be his ox, but torich would be his ox and oxen, his plural, or, or, you know the 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 male male of the cow but if you say your your ox with khun you say tor khun but tore khun would be your oxen your your oxes um, right now uh, other dialects you use only one sing only one form of the pronoun for both singular and plural nouns but it sometimes happens as that the type of pronoun they choose for to make as the fixed form of the, the suffix, pronominal suffix, is is the form which originated as the form added to plural nouns, like ehen in some of these dialects in the area of uh, Zahor, Mariapo, or Botnaya, Mangesh, all these on the Mosul plain. They would say ehen, torehin for your ox or your oxen, for example. There would be no distinction. But the, historically, the form is the form added to the plural noun. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of variation in, uh, in the third person suffixes. Uh, you get some very conservative dialects like Botnaya or Ankawa which still have the form E eh in the third masculine singular which is, this is the historical form and it's just the form you'll get in 
earlier dialects of Aramaic, biblical, you know, going all the way back to biblical Aramaic, and that's still preserved in some dialects on the Mosul plain. Uh, some dialects of the Mosul plain have this interesting feature of turning this this laryngal uh, to a pharyngal. Uh, it's a kind of strategy to preserve the H, it seems. Um, and uh, so you say things like eh, so you say tor eh, uh, his ox. Uh, but then you get a variety of uh, different types of third person pronoun, pronominal suffix in, in, in a range of other dialects like e eh, or eu or u. And all of these can be explained by a certain kind of historical development. Uh, e, e seems to have developed simply by dropping the H. Ehu seems to have developed by some kind of addition of a, a who from a who eu. Who just seems to have been a development from uh, possibly contraction of ehu. Uh, um, and uh, there's um, yeah okay. Now let's look at nouns in uh, the form of nouns. Now the first thing about nouns in Nina dialects is that. You've got a. Um, you remember in earlier Aramaic, uh, you have uh, this ending R on nouns, which expresses the definite article, right? Malkar, the king, right? Now, in in by the time you get to Nina, this R has become completely fixed. It's no, no longer functional as a definite article, and it only it is obligatory part of a noun um, and it's really what we just call a, a nominal inflection it, 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 it indicates it's that the, the word is a noun um, and uh, so the word susa in, ba, in Barawa means horse and the, the ah is, it doesn't, doesn't mean specifically the horse it simply means horse now there are other ways of expressing definiteness which I'll talk about shortly today and, t and particularly tomorrow um, now the point is that this nouns in R R um, can be masculine or or feminine so susa for example is, is masculine but the word ena I is feminine so it's not necessarily specifically a masculine ending it's really an unmarked nominal ending now there, there are a number of uh, feminine endings because there are two genders of course in Nina just as in uh, in earlier Aramaic um, so uh, and these are forms like ta or tha so susta means a female horse in Barwa or mare as we say in English uh, slotha is, a, is prayer shintha sleep so you have these variant forms ta or tha as you do get of course in earlier Aramaic you have variant forms of the feminine ending now in some dialects of course some dialects don't have the interdental tha as we saw yesterday such as the transab dialects like Jewish Arbel the Jewish transab dialects and so in such dialects this tha would shift to la because remember we had this interesting sound shift of an interdental th to la so slow la would be the word for a synagogue which is ultimately the same word as this slaughter prayer uh, the um, another strategy is to turn the, uh, the th into <coughs> th in, in the transam dialect so shinda or shintha uh, to, so it's a technique of eliminating um, the um, the interdental. In fact, the, probably the process of development of, of the th to the l at the intermediate stage of a d, <coughs> it would seem. It's a kind of a, um, that's the intermediate stage of development. Um, now, there are uh, plurals are formed uh, by various endings. Uh, it, the, uh, and the, the technique is to remo re remove the singular ending and replace uh, the, 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 the singular with a, a plural ending so 
and the most common plural form in the Lenin dialects is, is the form A this is the most common plural ending and A ultimately goes back to the determined state plural Aya um, but uh, it is now as I said uh, basically the, the, it doesn't express definiteness but um, it can be regarded as that it, it is the most frequently used plural ending and this is used with uh, masculine nouns like kepa, kepe, stones in Barua this is but also with feminine nouns like ilana is feminine in Barua tree but ilane trees you even use it sometimes you replace the feminine ending tap with it like nunta nune uh, and also this ending is used with uh, loan words because in Nina dialects uh, because of it, the extension, the, the, the very considerable contact with uh, Kurdish uh, in particular, there are a lot of, in the lexicon, there are a lot of Kurdish loanwords. And many of these loan wo loan words are, have, are taken into the language in the singular without any kind of inflectional ending. So the word for a, a fork from, from Kurdish, chang changal, comes at comes into the into Barwa simply as Changel. There's no adding of the A naval. Occasionally loan words are adapted to morphology and, and, and A the A vowel is added, but in this case you simply have Changel in the singular. But in the plural they form the plural by adding the plural ending. Mm -hmm. And crucially they add the most frequent plural ending, which is A, to the to to loan words. Uh, changale because uh, we're going to see lots of several other sorts of plural endings and so when you but it, it, it's an important point that when you when you actually have a loan word you use the most frequent ending to express the plural why because the most frequent ending is the most productive ending the most alive if you like yeah, ending uh, and it's not what I call specific to any particular lexical items. Now if you can move on for example to look at some of the other plural endings we have in Barwa for example we say Umrah is a church but you add the ending Ane to express the plural Umrane so we have the ending Ane there. Akhla it's word for a, a leg. Aklatha it are legs. Sorry, the comma should be here. Not, not, it's not before the S. Um, and that is uh, so. The ending is Arthur replaces A. This is a feminine ending. A. This is, sorry, this is a uh, a feminine noun, and, and this the, but there's no feminine ending. But the A is replaced by Arthur. Horna brother. Horna Wartha brothers. Betha Bethwartha houses. Um, now, these are less frequent endings. Some of them uh, more frequent than others, but they are, they are in principle less frequent than a. Uh, and in fact, they have become associated, in particular, to partic uh, particular lexical groups. For example, awatha is th is an ending which is used with. Um, mainly with kinship terms, terms relating to family. <coughs> so, uh, ma, mama, mama, watha, for example, that means the uncle, or uncles. Um, and uh, baba, baba, watha, father, fathers. So, uh, it, they become associated with particular lexical groups. Um, and um, and, uh, and and they're less frequent. Um, now I've been looking so far. With these are all ending. These are all nouns ending in simply a. Ah. Nouns having an explicit feminine ending like karta load, kalfa basket, susta, a female horse and mare. They <coughs> have a, a variety of endings, usually artha or yatha. So karta, karatha, kalfa, kalatha. Susta Susiata. Um, now, um, it's uh, often said that um, 
when you um, now when you have a contact languages in contact that what is mainly borrowed is lexicon and syntax but in fact languages in contact can have can have a, an influence on morphology we've already seen the, the influence of more on the pronouns I mean the pronouns we've seen how pronouns can change their shape by the influence of languages in contact they don't borrow the, 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 the we don't borrow the pronouns from as we see we didn't they weren't borrowing pronouns from Arabic or Kurdish but they were changing the shape in imitation of, of Arabic and Kurdish um, so that in a language contact situation that's one way in which morphology can be influenced by contact but another way is that you can actually you, there are uh, occasions of borrowing of, of morphemes and plural morphemes in fact in the Nidalics are sometimes borrowed from languages in contact uh, so we have the ending at which is ultimately of, of an Arabic origin which is borrowed into some of the Nina dialects. Crucially, in the Nina, only the Nina dialects on the Mosul plain, uh, not further east. Uh, again, this it expresses their greater relationship to Arabic. Uh, so, and these are found in uh, loan words like farda, which is a loan fardat. I mean, in the Nina dialects, the, the stress is in all Christian dialects in fact the stress is on the penultimate syllable mm -hmm. and therefore although the original form of the plural ending in Arabic would have been at a stress a long a vowel this, 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 this stress has moved off the plural ending and it's actually a short vowel so don't say fardet they say fardat hinna hinnat things but the interesting thing is that this at plural ending has been extended to some genuine Aramaic words so you, ha you can say things like Ilana Ilanat you can also say Ilane as we saw before but you can also say Ilanat Izza Izza is a goat Izzat for example um, so that's an example of how a borrowed morpheme can actually become transferred extended to to some of the native vocabulary um, Another way of expressing the plural is in a number of words in the Nina dialects expressed plural by reduplication. They have both the plural ending, a, but also there's a reduplication of the final syllable. So a word like tilpa in Barwa eyelash, eyelashes is tipape. Um, and these are typically um, formed from words with a syllabic pattern of C V C C A like that tilpa that is consonant vowel consonant consonant uh, so th that that is another strategy of forming the plural um, okay now so we've seen how the noun plurals can be are quite diverse although we have a basic form a the you get a variety of other plural forms and different nouns <coughs> but when we come to adjectives the situation is the morphology is far more simple in the inflection we have a simple we have a masculine adjective ending in a basima uh, but bas, uh, pleasant but and the feminine in ta basimta and the plural in a which is the basic plural form a and that and, and m all adjectives have a plural ending a for both wh whether the noun is masculine or feminine or whatever whatever the um, the form of the plural of the noun is. So if you say something like um, I don't know, betha uh, watha basime, you could say pleasant houses. So the point is therefore that the the um, inflection of adjectives is is far more. Um, Systematic, if you like, it's reduced down to a much sim a simpler system. Um, right now, now let's look at this phenomenon of nominal annexation, as I call it. This is the the really the historical development of the genitive particle d. Now, if you know in in early Aramaic, you have a genitive <coughs> particle d, originally d, in biblical Aramaic, 
which expresses uh, a, a, a genitive annexation, as I put it. Uh, what we mean by that, essentially, is that, the, that you have a, a, a noun followed by another noun which is expressing some kind of attribute of the first noun. Um, so the house of the king, in other words, the, a kingly house, in other words, a house that is uh, that, that uh, has the attribute of belonging to the king. Now, so you 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 will in early Aramaic, you know, this particle is is uh, is in, in fact originally independent d, but then is in in Syriac it, it is prefixed to the second noun. Um, so um, <coughs> you would. Um, Say in Syriac, Baitar de Malkar, for example, the house of the king. Uh, and this occasion is found in some particularly conservative dialects of Nina, such as Talakosh, you say Bushala de Nashe. The Bushala is sort of like a stew or cooked food of people. This is an example of one of my texts, Bushala de Nashe. Now that looks all very uh, <coughs> simple, like you <coughs> earlier had to make. However, in Majority of, uh, uh, in virtually all other Nina dialects, including often in Kalakosh itself, you get a uh, a the D is actually cliticized or suffixed to the head noun. So the story of my grandfather, Hokithit Sawi. Um, and it does seem there's a variety of reasons to believe that in fact this developed from Hokithe De um, that his his story of and this is of course this is a construction you'll get in Syriac it's called an anticipatory genitive pronoun Hokithe De and that's become contracted to Hokithet Sal crucially with the genitive particle suffix to the head noun now uh, in most Nina dialects, in fact, this particle becomes devoiced. So you say Bronit Malka, the, the son of the king, um, Barbet Yosef, the, the, the father of, of, of Joseph. So you, you, you would, for example, in, in Barwav and Jewish Arbel here, the, the, the particle has never. Uh, uh, or virtually never prefixed to the, the the second noun. It's always suffixed to the preceding noun. Um, and in fact, in some dialects, uh, you get a phenomenon whereby the it ending is completely contracted, uh, and you get forms like brawn mami, the son of my uncle, where this developed from brawnet mami. So um, this. Uh, uh, the actual genitive particle is completely lost. This is this is particularly uh, kept found particularly in what we call inalienable possession. That is, say, possession which is 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 um, um, a kind of an obligatory, a natural phenomenon like like kinship relationships. Um, the son of my uncle, um, or you know, the, the hand of the man, I mean, the parts of a body are inalienable. In other words, uh, when you have uh, nouns which ha have a very close relationship, a natural relationship, often the T is contracted. You think brawn mami. Um, and uh, now, um, when you go further uh, east to the, the eastern periphery of the Nina uh, dialect in, in, in particular in the Jewish Transam dialects, that is to say in the east of Iraq and the west of Iran uh, you find constructions like Shimma Brona, the name of the boy where there's no survival at all of the of the genitive particle so um, now I'm sorry, is it exception in this dialect or is it norm a norm? This is the norm. norm. So in Sulaymaniya and Jewish San and Daj, for example, um, this is the norm. Um, and uh, I 
if, before we go on it might be worthwhile asking ourselves why this has all happened why are you getting the suffixes of the genitive particle to the head noun in dialects the main body the main most majority in dialect and why is it that in dialects Jewish dialects in the in the far in the eastern periphery you're getting the, the omission of the particle completely well the answer uh, as is often the case is the, the, the situation of the language is in contact uh, now in <coughs> Kurdish in the areas where you have a T suffix, suffix to the head noun <coughs> the equivalent constructions in Kurdish would have a a, a, a what we call an ezarfe particle a genitive particle suffixed to the head noun and so really the Nina dialects are replicating this construction in this area in the far east of Iraq and uh, in, in western Iran uh, you get a um, particular type of Kurdish uh, where you, the Ezafe is not used um, and it seems as if this, this phenomenon in um, uh, in, in, in the Nina dialects is, is a replication of that, of that construction in Kurdish where you don't have it is off a is so uh, really the, you know, the, a lot of these developments are conditioned by languages in contact um, now uh, another fact which has uh, another phenomenon that's developed due to contact with, with, with Nina with, with, like with Kurdish is what goes on with demonstrative pronouns now we, we said we had in Barwar the anaphoric pronoun is or so if I say or nasha is that, that man I've, I've been talking about he's absent from the room here or nasha that man um, but if you were in a kind of genitive construction like annexation construction you would say it's the following, like this is in Barwa, Ahwaltit Donasha, the condition of that man. So you have Ahwalt, which is a, a loan from Arabic ultimately, through actually through Kurdish. Um, but the et is the suffix genitive, if you remember, like betit malka, ahwaltit. But then you have the demonstrative pronoun. You don't say onasha, you say donasha. So it seems as if you've got a kind of a second genitive pronoun prefixed or in fact becoming part of the or. And what's, what's actually happened is that you obviously historically that d is, this, is, is, a, is a prefixed particle, but it's actually become bonded with the pronoun and it's turned the pronoun into a what we call a we can call a genitive form of the pronoun now uh, it's it's a so therefore in Balwar you there are actually <coughs> two inflections of, of pronoun of demonstrative pronouns there's the what I call the nominative or but then there's the genitive or we could call it the the oblique form do and this is an in innovation Having, having nominative and oblique because in earlier Aramaic there was only nominative pro, um, independent pronouns but um, and you can see it's an oblique pronoun it's not simply the genitive particle because the genitive particle in its normal place suffix to the head noun well tit donasha now this development has been induced by contact with Kurdish because in Kurdish you have precisely that you have two demonstrative pronouns you have a nominative and a bleak so um, now uh, in um, some of these dialects the Jewish transab dialects which don't have a suffix it as you remember like Shimma Yosef the name of Yosef is Shimma Broni the, the name of my son if you have a demonstrative pronoun you can you still there's some of them still use that they actually have they preserved a, a, an oblique pronoun um, you could say Bela um, the the situation is a bit complicated because in this area the actual pronouns 
in Kurdish don't have a nominative and a bleak. So these poor <coughs> survivals from <coughs> Aramaic further west, from, uh, from Nina Dalek further west. Uh, but if you get the far eastern periphery in Keren, which is right down west in western Iran, the most in fact remote of the Nina Daleks, this, these D's have completely disappeared. You say Bela or Nasha, the house of that man, uh, which is completely in line with the um, Kurdish dialects of the region. Um, now, yeah, I think I probably sk skip over this because I want to get on to sort of something, something with the verbal morphology. I think, um, yeah, let's let's now look at the verb. Um, now, uh, the verbal morphology of Nina uh, and uh, modern Aramaic dialects, or Neo Aramaic dialects in general, has undergone a variety of, of, of development. And it, it, the Nina and central Neo Aramaic, that is basically Toroyo, have undergone probably the most radical developments in the verbal system of all the Neo Aramaic dialects. Um, if uh, we take what we can call middle Aramaic I mean we could call I mean it's a bit of a vague term but we're talking about early Aramaic of the sort of a period of like Syriac and, or, or Jewish Palestinian Aramaic the, the kind of Aramaic which are, some of you are learning in other classes we could distinguish three forms the perfective past Katal an imperfective realis which is a participle cartel an imperfective irrealist yiktal. Irrealist means subjunctive essentially. Um, now what happens in Nina is that uh, essentially the katal and the yiktal have disappeared and also in, uh, in the Toroyo. Um, and the katal and the yiktal have been replaced by participles. So katal has been replaced by katil which is a historically a passive participle and uh, yiktal has been replaced by kartil but kartil itself therefore I mean to um, in order to distinguish kartil which is now used as an irrealist further innovations occurred to the kartil form by typically adding prefixed particles like ki or e um, and uh, <coughs> These prefix particles, I mean the whole pattern of, of adding prefix particles to express the irrealis or indicative of, sorry, I, I meant realis, that the use of key or the use of prefix particles to express the indicative, the realis imperfective, is in fact a phenomenon of many languages of the area. You get it in uh, Kurdish, Armenian, you get it in also the Arabic dialects of the, of the region. I mean, the, 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 the so-called Khotu dialects. Um, and um, it's a very widespread phenomenon. Um, and also in other Iranian dialects <coughs> further, further, further east. Uh, they, uh, and by, by the way, as is usually the case, although these particles like Ki or E um, do sort of follow the same pattern as, let's say, Kurdish or Armenian, uh, and sometimes they sound very much like them. And, for example, uh, Armenian has a particle gi, and um, or some of the Armenian dialects and uh, Arabic dialects sometimes have their par have a particle ku, for example. They say ku yishrub in uh, the Jew Jews of Arbil who speak Arabic was you have a particle ku. But uh, and then the Nina dialects have ki or e typically, but the, these although these 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 particles sound a bit like the, the, the particles in the language in contact, they are still native Aramaic particles. Um, um, then some dialects have innovated further by by introducing another form, bektala, which is a simply a form based on, a, on, an, on an infinitive and a prefixed locative particle in, bektala would be in killing for example uh, but that's used to express progressive um, and typically the most innovative verbal forms are progressives 
and so many Daleks, particularly those towards the 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 north the north east of the Nina, Nina area, have innovated Bitkala form to express the present progressive. You know, I am now eating, I am now speaking, and therefore these key Khartil forms get pushed out of the progressive into a indicative uh, habitual meaning that I, I normally speak, I normally eat I eat every day not I'm eating now um, and uh, this Birtala form itself is, is, is a, seems to be has resulted from contact um, you find it in many languages particularly in that northeastern area of Nina um, and it's, it is it is it is. This is a feature I do believe has some kind of uh, contact, relate, some kind of. It has been induced by contact with Armenian to some extent, because this is a normal form in Eastern Armenia. Uh, so it's found in in standard Turkish, uh, but in actual fact, in the local Turkic languages of of the area, it's not used. So it's not likely to have been to originate from from Turkish. Okay, let's move on. Uh, if we quickly look at other uh, Neo-Aramaic dialects, we see that other Neo-Aramaic dialects have actually preserved more of the original system of Middle Aramaic. For example, neo mandaic has preserved the Khatal form, um, and uh, Western Neo-Aramaic has pre 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 preserved the Khatal form and the Yuktul, Yuk Yuktul form. So Nina and Troy are the most innovative in this respect. Okay, now uh, the inflection of verbs in Nina is, is, uh, um, is done through uh, by, uh, by inflecting a series of, of verbal stems or ba I call them bases actually the, and um, the, these bases are, can, are, are, the ba are as follows there's the, there's the present base Pathich which is historically a, an active participle the past base, ptich, this is in Barwa, this is the verb to open, which is historically a passive participle. Then we have the resultative participle, ptichha, which is historically the passive participle and a definite article. Then the imperative, ptoch, and the infinitive, ptacha. Um, now, the, the dialects are, uh, have a series of... Um, I call them stems, or they're sometimes referred to in Hebrew as binyanim, <coughs> that is to say de derivational patterns, uh, like the pa'al, pa'el, etc. Now, Nina dialects have lost a lot of, the, of these in, uh, derivational patterns. I mean, if in Syriac, for example, there is there's a, a series of patterns, uh, many of them with the with, with the so-called T element, like eth per l, eth per al, etc. Um, now n these T stems don't occur in Nina dialects. Uh, they uh, have been lost. Um, but most Nina dialects have three uh, stems, I call them, corresponding to um, to the uh, pa l. We have stem two, and these are the these are the bases you get. Uh, in um, uh, this is actually in the Karakosh dialect, in fact, um, and this uh, and this is stem three, which is the equivalent to the Af L in, in Syriac, the causative, um, and uh, the uh, um, this, by the way, this this is the dialect of Karakosh, which shows, in fact, in in some respects, Karakosh dialect can be more archaic than even classical Syriac for example because here in the infinitive we have arkoche which is the, the afl, we can call it an afl if you like from the verb to soften but you notice there's no m because in classical Syriac you would uh, uh, the actual the infinitive of the afl has an, has, has an m element Right, maktalu. So it's, uh, and that is, seems to be by analogy with the participle. But here in Karakosh we've preserved the, the, there's a preservation of arkoche without the M. It seems to be a more archaic element. Yes, in Jibie. Yes. Sorry. In Jibie. The same thing. Yes. 
Right. Without M and with the final A. Octolia. Or octolia according to Morgan Stern. Right. Right. Um, um, yes, Jewish Babylonian Aramaic. Right. Um, but um, the uh, um, okay, yeah, okay. Th- th- this is th- this is um, to show that uh, uh, in some some Nina dialects, the, you know, the, these distinctions between between the stems have has been reduced considerably. For example, Jewish Shulamania has only got two stems left, uh, and what's happened in them is that the although they are still they can be called distinct stems I'll, I haven't got time to go through all the sort of intricacies of this but basically the <coughs> they, they essentially there's the, there's the, the this pa'al, the basic stem and then there's the af'el with, it, with, it, with it, the, the causative stem but if you look carefully the, the actual um, the vowels of I mean it's a little bit complicated because the things have changed in various ways but essentially because they have different inflections the different voweling in the first stem according to whether it's transitive or intransitive perhaps we'll leave that aside but the main point is that the vowels the vowel patterns for the first stem and the causative second stem are in fact the same in fact the, the, in terms of the actual vowels uh, so, for example, infinitive of the first stem, paloche, a o e, is the same as in mardoche, a o e. Um, and uh, so, um, and so basically, there's been, uh, in terms of the actual vowel, vowel patterns, there's been a, a, a complete merger of the stems and, it, it, it's, uh, and in fact it can even be argued that they are, the stems have completely fallen together and in fact that these, the M here Mardich is simply really a has become a root letter it's treated like a root letter so in fact there's simply one inflection, one stem but applied to either a triliteral root with three consonants or a quadrilateral root applied to four consonants. So that that is, I'm just. This is just an example of how the, um, you know, the the there is a kind of contraction in the number of of the derived stems because if you're used to uh, early Aramaic, all these many different stems, you know, pa'al, pa'el, pa'el, af'el, ifpa'el, ifpa'al, etc., ifpa'al. In Nini, all, a lot the, these have become reduced considerably, um, and it's interesting to ask, you know, why this is the case again, and and it's probably likely that it is uh, due to language contact, and because there was there's not there's, there was not really anything very equivalent in in the, in the Kurdish dialects, for example. There is a kind of there, there is a kind of causative um, morpheme, but it's not very productive in. Good. Um, now, okay. Um, so we've got these. We have these bases. Yeah. Let me just talk about how these are inflected. We have the present base pathich and the past base pthich. But how these are simply the base for the inflection. If you want to add personal endings, what do you do? You you ha- you have to add um, typically to the present base pathich you add a series of what I call d suffixes. D suffixes means direct suffix. This is the term I tend to use nowadays. And these historically are derived from certainly the second and first person. They're derived from clitic forms of the um, of the of, of the pronouns. So et at et un, na and ech, this is from Jewish Sulemania, are historically critic forms of the of the of uh, personal pronouns. The the third person are sin- essentially the endings of nominal endings, like um, 
Pathic zero, that means, is, it simply means this is the form of the originally in Aramaic, the historical singular uh, non determined state of the noun. And pathcha is the, ah, is the feminine ending of, uh, uh, of a noun, and e is the historically the plural ending of a noun, in, which with, with, a, with a loss of the n. Now, the past base, pathich, is typically um, inflected by the so-called L suffixes, which are cons- uh, historically a, a, a dative suffix, L, two, plus some kind of phenomenal ending. <coughs> and these are, uh, this L has the function essentially of an agent. It has a, uh, it's not, that's the sort of the attributing an action to uh, a particular person. Um, and uh, this is <coughs> um, so I want to um, uh, but I'm tr- just trying to simplify this the, the um, uh, in, in the languages in the dialects of the of, of, of of the of the eastern periphery in in um, the, the the Jewish Transab dialects, you have a situation whereby you have a form of ergativity, and ergativity essentially means that is that a typical ergative language is where you get the on the marking of a or on the verb of um, of an intransitive verb. It's the same as the marking on the verb of, a, of an object, and then the transitive subject has it a different marking. Now, uh, let me talk you through this, if I can, to explain how this works. So, if you wanted to say in Jewish Salam um, um, ma well, I should also say this ergativity has developed only in the past. The past. Um, the past perfective in the present perfect in the present tense is the present imperfective <laughs> it is it's not it doesn't uh, it's not used um, and um, yeah, I should perhaps go back to this table first to say that this L suffix is also used in the in the Nina Dad to express direct objects I mean, that's a very important point to note it can be used to express agents and it can be used to express direct objects. The D suffixes in these transab dialects are used to express subjects of a present verb or subjects of an I, uh, also of, of intransitive past verbs. And let, let me just give you some examples. So if you want to say, my daughter pulls the friends, this is, an, this is a transitive verb, present base, brati baruche garshalu and this is the object and this is the verb she pulls garsha and the a is the d suffix on the on the present base lu is the direct object now the, this direct object suffix is agreeing with this this object noun so it, it is what's called an object agreement but crucially it's the l suffix agreeing with the object and the R agrees with the agent that is to say it is the present base uh, and it's agreeing with the agent here also we have a present base Prati Samcha my daughter stands this is intransitive Prati Samcha and the A agrees with Prati this is the D suffix um, now but what happens if you go to the past is that you have constructions <coughs> like this the friends pulled my daughter Baruche Brati Gershalu and Baruche Brati is the object Gershalu and here the A refers to the object and the Lu refers to the the agents the plural Baruche Baruche so, uh, but if you wanted to say my daughter stood up intransitive you'd say brati smicha and the A would be agreeing with the intransitive subject so therefore you have a typical ergative construction whereby the, the marker of the intransitive 
subject is the same as the marker of the transitive object, Gersha, in, in, as in Gershadu. And that is, so in these Nina dialects in the, in the, in the east of the periphery, we have, a, we have what's known as ergative syntax, and this has developed through contact with, with Kurdish. Um, that's all, I can miss that out. Um, in fact, the, 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 um, Professor, uh, uh, I'll, I'll miss that out as well, because we, we are getting a bit short of time. But I think the main point is that, um, that is, is this type of ergative construction which I've just described is, is rather peculiar to those Jewish Transab dialects in the east of the Nina di area. Majority of the Nina dialects in, in the past but in the past basis they have the express the subject of both transitive and intransitive verb by an L suffix. So in Barwa, for example, you say my friends pulled my daughter Khaurawati Grishala Brati and so Grisha A is the D suffix agreeing with Brati the object and La is the L suffix agreeing with the agent but my daughter Rose Brati Kim La and that, that is all, that third feminine singular of L suffix agreeing with the intransitive subject. It so happens that la is both L third feminine singular and also third pl plural in this dialect. It's slightly confusing, but it's an L suffix. So crucially, you get the L suffix both with the intransitive in the past, both with the intransitive subject and with the transitive subject, which is a uh, is not a normal ergative construction. Um, so I'll pass. I won't go into too much detail about that, but uh, okay, let's a little, little, little bit more about uh, some other aspects of the verbs. You can create more expressions of, t of, of tense and aspect by adding various uh, suffixes and prefixes, like futures are exp in Baro expressed by adding bid path. Uh, bid bid is, a, is historically the development of the verb to want by uh, ye and it's, it's been contracted by ye de he wants to do something and that's contracted down to bid uh, it so happens that in Kurdish dialect of the region in Kurmanji you have <coughs> futures can be expressed by particles with sounding very much like this bi and it, it's again it's one of these situations where you haven't got a loner lo lo loner uh, a word or morphology but you've got some kind of and in English by the way the same thing but <laughs> <laughs> that's the contact yeah <laughs> I'm not sure Nina's been in contact with English yeah. in English the same thing here's this chart of the prefixes across the languages of the area for example <coughs> you say kuniktib uh, in, in, in Azakh for example um, Arabic these are the prefixes and the indicative. It's, a, it's an aerial feature. Um, and I'll perhaps I'll skip over that. Um, I'm not going to have time to go through the copula, I think. Uh, I think I'll just say two sentences about the copula because I'm going to have to stop. I think I'd like to have a few minutes for questions. Uh, but very briefly, um, Yeah, what have we got here? <coughs> yeah, I think all I'm going to have to say about the copula is that let me just tell you the end of the story of the copula. Basically, if you look at Syriac or earlier Aramaic and indeed Turoyo, you we have a, a, a so called pronominal copula, which is a, expressing a, a verb to be, like, you know, yeah, he is big or equivalent to English verb to be. Of course in Russian you don't have the verb to be, <laughs> but it expresses the verb to be. Um, um, la, and, and they are, are in Syriac and Toroyo, they are, they are suffix pronouns, or clitic pronouns. I'm trying to give you a... Perhaps I don't have an example of that here, but I'll... Um, um, you know, you say you know, Joseph big he, essentially. Mm -hmm. And and that he is criticized. 
to, 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 to the adjective. Um, but, I mean, to cut a very long story short, in Nina Daleks, this copula, this pronominal copula, underwent all kinds of changes. And one of the most interesting changes it underwent was that it became more and more verb-like. And to the extent that, when it, in, the f in the eastern periphery, in the, in the Jewish transamp dialects, which are always the most innovative, as we've been seeing, you get a copula which is, has complete verbal inflection, and it looks exactly like the verbal inflection in verbs, like the verb, there is a verb to be as well, hawe, which is expresses irrealis, like maybe or will be, uh, and you can see the inflection there, a, 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 n, a, at, etc. You get the same inflectional endings on the copula in the present. In, in the in, in the clitic form of the copula. Now that paradigm there started off in originally as a paradigm of, of, of in clitic pronouns, but essentially it's now turned into the same uh, endings as, as, as verbs. Um, which I mean, as I said earlier, I mean these the, these endings it, um, themselves started off life as as, as clitic pronouns, but. The point is that in the the copula had a slightly different development in that they, they the forms of the copula haven't got the I mean the forms of the copula were looking more like um, were, were looking rather different from the endings of, of verbs. But in Jewish and Dutch these the copula endings become completely assimilated to the, or leveled with those of, of the verbs. Now that again is a feature of, of languages in contact because if you look at the language in contact of the area in Kurdish and in, in the, only certainly in the Iranian languages and indeed in Turkish you've got basically the, the, the copula expressed by a, a, a clitic which has the same form as the inflection of, 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 of present verbs. Okay, look, I mean, I, I have a lot more to s I could say, but I ha I, I'm going to have to stop there. Um, and uh, I hope I've shown you, you know, that the, you know, there's, there's a incredible amount of diversity in the Nina dialects. And, and what is particularly fascinating is looking at the way in which the, these dialects have developed from the historical forms of Aramaic and how... Um, uh, how, and and, the, and, this, uh, and the, the mechanisms of change uh, and these change are, are be very often in, and, and have been in, induced by by the languages uh, in contact. Good. So I mean, do we've got? Uh, if, are there any questions? Perhaps very briefly, we could have a. Uh, yes, yeah. you told us that there are certain things in Nina which are typologically rare or almost unique. What precisely did you mean? Um, yeah, well, we've got, well, to start with, with some of this, this the, the verbal syntax, I mean, the, the, this verb, this, uh, we've got us, I mean, I, I only very briefly touched on, on, the, on this notion of this subject of ergativity, but within the various, each dialect's got slightly different forms of alignment, mm -hmm. and some of those alignments, for example, are not are very rare psychologically. That's what you meant, yeah. yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. I mean, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's very difficult to say, uh, I wouldn't like ever to say unique, because you never... No, you told you, very rare. You told that those languages are interesting because there are features there which are typologically rare, yeah. right? Because if you look at the typological literature, you'll find that certain certain things are not supposed to happen in Nina Dynamics, <laughs> as they do. That's interesting. Yeah. So you mean the, uh, the alignment, uh, certain al alignment? Yeah, that's one example, yeah, mm -hmm. example, yeah. Comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alexei. Uh, how do you explain these uh, forms of the past for the second uh, or third stem uh, uh, with U, like Pulitle and Mutile? Diachronically, uh, what's the origin of this? Well, they must come from participles with a mu in them. It just that it's a variant form. Uh, I mean that you. Um, we don't find it in mi in uh, middle. Well, uh, dialects. one would assume there must there must have the form. I mean, the thing we talk about Middle Aramaic. I mean, we're just talking about attested literary forms of Aramaic, and one must assume that. Uh, 
their origins are in spoken vernaculars which yeah, did have it. So there them. might be something like Hufal or something. Yeah, I mean, historically, I suppose they would have developed from a, um, ultimately a, um, uh, Hufal forms, I suppose. Yes, yeah, like, I mean, they're not unique because well, Mukhutal is not found in other Middle Aramaic dialects, certainly. Um, and, um, yeah. But, I mean, you know, it is, it's not, I mean, that is, ne- that is, who's in passive participles are found in, in number of Middle Aramaic dialects. Yeah. Good. <coughs> Okay, well tomorrow we'll continue with syntax, uh, where again I'm going to just touch on a few features of syntax, uh, 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 realising that one and a half hours is not enough to cover everything I want to say. Good, thanks. Thank you very thank much. You. And thank, thank you. you. And thanks, Julie, for your computer. <laughs> I hope you're coming tomorrow. I'm sorry for the inconvenience that you've had with it. Yes, are you coming tomorrow? Yes, sure. Okay, good. Of course. <laughs> How good could I skip it? <laughs>